action, then... Boom! It was like an ugly contest where everyone was a winner. This one dude's all... So I shot him. And then I shot this other one. Shot a couple extra guys just to be safe. I did, I did a lot of shooting, if I'm being totally honest. Then... They destroyed my favorite store. Second favorite. There's that spicy ramen shop. I'm getting sidetracked. Look, long story short, I get busy. And I'm thinking, I've got this. You know? When you're in that, you go, I got this. But man, I so did not have it. Uh, guess you have to be there. Well, better get back to it. Pre-show countdown continues, Guardians. You could say that the Destiny 2 gameplay premiere awaits. I'm joined by Justin Massengill from PlayStation. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, Deej. I'm very excited to be here. I'm glad to have you here. You know, I've sat on your couch for many a live stream. You've interviewed me. Now, the shoe is on the other foot. How does that feel? Uh, I feel a little vulnerable right now, but I trust you. No, you're in a safe place, I promise. So, uh, we're going to be playing Destiny today. After the presentation's over, uh, Guardians are going to storm into this room, single file, carefully, hopefully, and this is going to be the site of the first ever Destiny 2 LAN party. So as you can see, we're going to be playing Destiny on the PS4 Pro. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys have done with it. So uh, you play Destiny when you're not talking to the PlayStation community. You are a Guardian in your spare time. Uh, how do you like to play Destiny? I don't, I don't know if I'd say spare time. I'd say it's most of my time at this point. Uh, I love to play Destiny in lots of different ways, but I think uh, my favorite part of the game has got to be the raids. Ever since my fire team and I first cracked the seal on the Vault of Glass, I haven't been able to get enough. And uh, what is your go-to class? 
Uh, gotta go with Warlock. Gotta go with Warlock. Of course. It's the only way to play. You know what's up. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna play Destiny. We're gonna play Destiny in some different ways. Uh, what is the first shot that you wanna fire into the world of Destiny 2? I have a feeling this is gonna be a hard no, but I wanna see a new raid. Uh, that is going to be absolutely a hard, <laughs> hard no. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, given the other wide range of options, uh, what are some of the activities that you're hoping to experience before you leave the building today? Uh, I'd really like to get my hands on some new Crucible stuff. If I can check that out, see how it feels to a casual PvPer like myself. That could be arranged. Yeah? Yeah, I think we can make that happen for you. All right, sounds good. So, uh, check this out. What did you bring for me? Uh, I'm sorry it's not for you, Deej. We did bring something special, though. All right, well, it looks like this just became an unboxing. <laughs> Let's dig in. All right, so I'm going to pass the microphone off to you. So, uh, yeah, we do have this custom Destiny 2 box that we got created in honor of the gameplay premiere event. Uh, we're not giving it away today, but if you stay tuned to PlayStation social channels, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, you will find out later this summer how you can win this box and the PS4 Pro contained therein. Look at that. That's real nice. So if they follow you at PlayStation on Twitter, if they find you where you live on Facebook, uh, this too could be yours. Uh, but we have an aircraft hangar full of PS4 Pros today. And uh, you'll see the entire venue. I mean, you know, we'll tease it right now, but if you look out across here, just PS4 Pros as far as the eye can see. All of this will be mine someday. Someday, all of this will be yours. Maybe in about an hour or two, you'll have access I'm, to all of I'm this. I'm still in the middle of setting up, but I'm pretty sure that that was just a legitimate PlayStation 4 inside of a box that said Destiny 2. I don't know if that would be too hype. Thank you so much for being on hand for this. Thank uh, you, uh, yeah. I'll be set up in a bit. The lights aren't even on and everything yet. Is rapidly approaching every time we break in on the countdown timer it gets just a little bit closer so stay tuned we'll have more for you to watch more people for you to meet before the time comes for you to see destiny 2 in action We are still counting down to the main event, and just like you, most of the people that work at Bungie are waiting for this live stream to begin up in our studio at a viewing party at Bungie. But I do have some teammates who are down here to experience the Destiny 2 gameplay premiere along with the community. And one of them is studio co-founder, chief creative officer, the game director for Destiny 1, and fellow guardian, Jason Jones. How's it going, Deesh? Glad to have you here. I would love to hear a story about some of the experiences that you have had as a player of the game with the community. <laughs> right on. Uh, so in, uh, in Destiny 1, when we launched the game, we, we were really excited about it. We'd been playing it a lot. We, we thought people were going to love it, but we had no idea how people were going to react. 
And so when, when Destiny 1 launched, um, we were all online you know, the, the minute that it went live. And I started playing not with people from Bungie, but with people from the community. I accepted every friend request that I got, and I you know, went blind into the raid with groups. So I mean, I wasn't blind, but I was watching, I was pretending like I was blind. Um, I never you know, told anybody that I worked at Bungie because that would have that would have ruined the you know the joy that I was experiencing watching people see this for the first time. And anyway, there were, there were many fun moments in that in that time. Uh, but I remember the first uh, the first night that Zer showed up in the tower, yeah. and uh, we had been playing. I was in this group of, of three, and I don't know what we were doing, but um, we'd been playing all day, and people were talking about how they had to go to bed, and uh, we went back to the tower to turn in our our, our engrams. Uh, to the to the V1 cryptarch, the original the original evil cryptarch. Yeah, purples become blues cryptarch, right? My favorite cryptarch. Oh God. And, <laughs> and uh, they were turning in their engrams, and I, I knew Zur was was there. I'd been watching the clock, um, and I di I discovered you know our tentacled friend, um, and I started saying over voice like, Hey guys, come over here. Look at this thing I found. And if you remember, like the original Zur experience, you'd never seen an exotic before in Destiny, and suddenly there was this creepy guy in the tower that was showing you you know, this amazing stuff. And the group I was with started to freak out and like one guy had enough strange coins to actually buy something. He bought Mask of the Third Man and was running around the tower screaming with it on. And it was, yeah, it was just an amazing experience to watch people enjoying this thing uh, that we, yeah, that we, that we, that we built. And yeah, I don't know, that's my, that's my story. That's when it becomes real for us, right? Yeah, I mean, right, absolutely. I mean, that's the only reason we do it. I mean, that's the, that's why it, yeah, I mean, yes, right. That's exactly why it, yeah, why it matters. Yeah. So. As a player of the game, as a fan of the world that you had a hand in creating, what does this moment, what does this day mean to you? Um, I'll, I'll let the Destiny 2 team speak for themselves. They've done amazing work, and they're going to be showing it off in, in just a second. But I'm, I'm excited that we're one step closer today to me being able to play D2 as a, as a, as a player and have that, that same experience all, all over again, going into the world uh, fresh. That's awesome. And some of the people who are here in attendance today will also be playing. So we'll be sure to look over their shoulder and maybe get our first learnings about the world of Destiny 2. So the countdown continues. We are ever closer to the gameplay reveal for Destiny 2. Thanks so much. For the final act of this pre-show countdown, we're going to be joined by a titan who just might sound familiar to you. 
You may recognize him as a Baltimore City police lieutenant or maybe even the hotel concierge of the criminal underworld, but to millions of guardians, Lance Reddick is the voice of Commander Zavala, leader of the city defenses, and our Titan Vanguard. It is awesome to have you here with us today. It's pretty awesome to be here. So I want to talk to you about the character that you bring to life. Uh, when you approach the mic and you are Zavala, what influences your performance? Well, I mean, so uh, it's, 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 wow, that's actually not that simple a question because um, in some ways it's a very technical process of doing voice acting for a, a video game. Mm -hmm. But um, to me, aside from actually doing Shakespeare, it's the, probably the most Shakespearean role I've ever played. Um, he's very regal, he's very stoic, but at the same time, um, there's, uh, there's so much weight to everything he does. And so uh, more, than it, more than anything else that I do, I r rely on the director. So the director and I interact a lot when I'm working on this game. So a guardian is a hero, but Zavala is our leader. Like you were talking about Shakespearean heroes, Shakespearean kings. Is that where your mind goes when you're Zavala? Um, yeah, I mean, to me, the, uh, it, it's, it's so funny because <laughs> Uh, I'll always, uh, sometimes I'll make Shakespearean references when I'm joking, like when we were doing the, uh, uh, when I was doing the voice for the trailer, yeah. that, that's about, that's the, for this new iteration, uh, I made a comment about, uh, oh, this is a Henry V, this is the St. Christmas Day speech. Uh, or yesterday, there was something about him being somber. I was doing a session yesterday, and I said, oh, this is the Hamlet version. So, uh, yeah. It's great that you're able to fall back on your experiences as an actor and your, you know, studies in the classics. We've heard a little bit more from Zavala in the reveal for Destiny 2. We're going to hear a little bit more from Zavala today. Can't wait for our community to see that. I can't wait to see it myself. But without spoiling anything, talk to me about what it's been like working on Destiny 2 outside of Destiny 1. How has the character changed and how has your work on the project changed? Well, I mean, in Destiny 2, he's, uh, in Destiny 1, he was basically just in the tower. So he was more kind of giving directions so there was a lot of exposition. There was a lot of um, being kind of the, 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 the general and the calm. Uh, and Destiny 2, he's actually in a fight. Uh, obviously, I can't give any spoilers about why that's happening. But uh, yeah, he and, and uh, yeah, they're all in the fight now. It's difficult to keep secrets. It's difficult to talk about something we're excited about without telling people exactly what it is. I, I feel your pain. But in a matter of moments, I think they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, Zavala is part of the struggle. Uh, you're uh, you're part of the action a little bit more this time, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, my character does a lot more. Uh, he's he's fighting, <laughs> fighting for his very survival. Yeah, fighting for the survival of of humanity, fighting for the survival of uh, all the guardians. Yeah. So this is something that you understand. It's never fair when you're talking to an actor to ask them if they play the games that they work on. But I have a little bit of inside information here. You play Destiny. Uh, yeah, I play Destiny a lot, actually. Almost, <laughs> uh, I'm embarrassed to say this almost every day, yeah. So when you play Destiny, what class do you play as? Uh, well, I'd say 75% of the time I play Warlock. 25% of the time I play Titan. As you should, right? <laughs> so when you're playing as a Titan, is it because of an emotional connection to the character, or do you just like punching stuff? I just, yeah, I like throwing those hammers, and I like, the, I like the fist when he comes down with the, yeah. All right, yeah. all right. Well, uh, have you ever played a raid? Only once. And who led the way when you were on that raid? Uh, you should know, because it was you. <laughs> I got to play a raid with Commander Zavala. It was actually one of my favorite moments in Destiny, deep in the Vault of Glass, playing with a Titan that spoke with Zavala's voice. So I want to thank you for that. We should do it again sometime. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I wonder if there are any people in our community who would like to lead you on another raid. I hope so. All I mean, right, I, I, all right. Well. I mean, I'm going to call you first. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put together a really good fire team for us. Great. So uh, we are moments away from learning what Zavala has to say about this next game. And uh, before we do that, we're going to take a look one more time at the original reveal trailer for Destiny 2. Uh, but if fans of the game want to hear more from you, if they want to see more of your work, where else can they find you? Well, uh, I'm on a series on Amazon called Bosch. The third season just dropped uh, about a month ago. Um, I've got, uh, I'm in a new series on Comedy Central. Uh, we don't have an air date yet, but uh, we finished uh, shooting the first season. It's called Corporate. We just finished shooting this first season in February. So that'll, um, that, that'll, that'll start to air in the next six months or so. And then I've got a film that uh, called The Domestics. It's kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, action 
thriller that's coming out sometime later this year. Genre that you might know something about, huh? Post yeah, although the, the role I play, I'm, <laughs> interestingly enough, I, I'm, uh, I get to do a lot more action than I usually get to do. So um, I'm really looking forward to that film coming out. Yeah. Well, if you just don't get enough of Lance Reddick and Destiny, those are the other places where you might be able to find him. But right now, we're gonna see Zavala as we rally the troops. Times may be dark, but we are Earth's greatest hope. Look around you. A gathering of noble guardians new and old. Okay, listen up. Um, you're a bunch of dirty misfits, but you're all that's left, so you'll have to do. Our home was attacked. I was there and fought against the endless onslaught. They kept coming, so I kept firing. Not gonna lie, I was magnificent. Despite the sacrifice of many brave guardians, we lost everything. The tower, the city, our home. So, everything is gone. Your stuff, my stuff, most importantly, my stuff. Today we know our enemy. His name is Gary or Gil. Glenn? Is it? I don't know. Something with a G! Go. I know you look to me in times of peril. But this is not my battle alone. Which means if I don't see you out there, I'll kill you myself. It is time to avenge this injustice, for that is the duty of all guardians. Worst case scenario, you die. But who knows? Maybe you won't. So I ask you, who will stand with me? Yeah! Oh, really, guys? That, that was inspired. Also, there will be a ton of loot! Uh, yeah, right? That's what I thought. All right. Well, yeah. Now, now that should be working. Let's see. Oh, but that is working. All right. We're good to go there.
Here we go. Getting a real Dark Zoe Z vibe right now. We know that we were chosen for a reason. By something greater than ourselves. For as deep and wide as humanity's rivers have run, it has now been reduced to a precious few, needing something to believe in, and a place to call home. This is what we have been called to. The future that we fight for. The future we will protect. Shaped by the fires of each new battle. Forged and sharpened into what we must become for the fight ahead. It's pretty hype so far. What we have built is only the beginning, a symbol of what we can achieve, of who we are. And our great purpose here. But the day may come when we will be tested, when all we hold dear is threatened. And then we will see what each of us is truly. Pretty super hype. That day has arrived. That day we've been waiting for. When we were talking about the slide setup for today, we got a pretty cool presentation. We are like, hey, Luke, what do you want to put behind you? Right up on the stage. Like, What's going on, demon? A big ass tooth. It's, yeah. It's huge. It's like the, yeah, the giant. The reason why is because the two is a reminder. It's a reminder that Destiny 2 is going to be a new beginning for everyone. It's a convergence of veteran players like yourselves and new players into our universe. It's a I'm, I'm really hoping that, yeah, like a melee roaming is like going to be something. Where Destiny 2 will be available for the first time. And in that other room that you're going to go to when we're done here this morning, it's over there to play. It's got all kinds of cool stuff in it. We think it's pretty amazing. I'm sure you're going to tell us what you think about it, too. I know. You can read about it on Reddit. <laughs> to us, a sequel just represents an opportunity to start fresh. It represents a chance to welcome new players into our world, into the amazing Destiny community that we're all a part of. The second thing I'm going to talk about this morning, as I am the last barrier between you and seeing the game, is the vision for Destiny 2. As we've been building this game, there have been three things that are rattling around our heads. Just three. Those are the things that the team and I are going to be talking about this morning and sharing with you. The first one is a world that pulls you in. This is about having a story you can relate to. It's about having characters that you want to, be, you want to hang out with, characters you want, to, you want to work with. This is about having enemies, of course, enemies you want to face. It's about the way we build our environments at Bungie. We want to create experiences that 
Make you seek what's around every corner. How's the audio? That, that's the first part. Is the it too loud or can you hear what they're saying? Amazing things to do. And this is just, this is amazing things to do for everyone, no matter your mood. If you're a solo player, in Destiny 2 today, we're going to talk about how we're changing the way exploring the world works. If you're a competitive player, I'm sure there are some people who enjoy Crucible in the audience. I saw, I saw Triple Wreck on a flight. If you're a competitive player, we've, we've rethought the Crucible from first principles. We're, we're moving all activities in PvP. Um, we've I don't know. Something, ways, something pretty extraordinary. We've, we've done this because we want to create a sense of mastery. In order to master anything, am I too high? It. And that understandability comes from a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to get your hands on later this morning. The third part here is cooperative. What about that? Everyone knows I like the cooperative part of Destiny. And in Destiny 2, we have a ton of new public events, we have brand new strikes, and of course, there's a brand new raid. And we're going to show it right now. No, we're not. <laughs> of course, right? I talk about the raid last because it leads me to my third point this morning, which is about there's always someone to play with. This is a big one for us. The raids in Destiny 1 couldn't be experienced by everyone. 50% of people who reached the level cap organized into fire teams and completed a raid. This is amazing. Like, I think this is almost a miracle. Because whether you did it through your friends list or the communities that you formed or used out of game applications to build fire teams and take on these incredible challenges, or, as I know, pull the network cable from Crota. <laughs> I know, that's like a year one deep cut. <laughs> so is that. Uh, but that means tons of players, 50%, never had the opportunity to experience Destiny's most unique content. And that miracle that I talked about, the half of you who've played, that's not good enough for Destiny 2. So this morning, we're going to talk about how Trials, the Nightfall, and the Raids will finally be available to all players. Destiny 2's vision. I don't know. Oh, wow. Okay, I am a little bit high. I don't know if, uh, if I would get hype about Destiny that. Destiny 2's vision boils down to this really simple statement. It's a world I want to be in. When I go there, there's always amazing things for me to do. And if I want, there's always someone for me to play with. On behalf of Bungie and our partners at Activision, Thank you so much to the people in the audience who made the trip. Thank you so much to the people out in the chat spamming Senpai or whatever the emotes the kids are using these days. <laughs> I don't know, I'm too old for that. And to everyone else who spent any time in our worlds, thank you. The wait is over. This is Destiny 2, and this is Homecoming. Tell me this is a practical joke. Well, it kills me to say it, but I, I would be really impressed. Impressing you, Cade, is the easiest thing I'll do all day. Let's get serious, people. Zavala, this is my serious face. Can't you tell? Ikora, what have you got? Someone or something has sabotaged the Skyline defense systems. And comms have been spotty for the last few hours. Every sensor beyond the wall has gone dark. Hmm. Maybe it's just the storm. Maybe it's... What are the set feeds telling us? Nothing. Well, that's good, right? No. I mean, they're not there. There are no satellites. And that's not good. Battle stations! Did she just grab him and blink? Please let that be a thing.
Okay, so that's uh, that's some new shit right there. Fucker is still sweeping, yes. Oh, that's great. Ikora, the speaker is gone. Red Legion, you will take no more from us, and you will find no mercy in me. Oh shit. Oh, finally! So the sequel is what was behind that door the whole time. Is that it? Is that the dubious? positive that flying combat's gonna be a thing. Actual load time? That was quick as fuck. Sir, grenade, grenade launcher type. King, what's your status? Ah, uh, low on ammo. All flaming fists. Trap burning out. Anyone heard from Akora? That's the switch for the speaker. Form up for me. What 
is that? Is that just a new... Empowering Rift and Burning. at that sun singer though oh look at the beautiful warlock I'm so glad that they decided to show off the warlock gameplay the shield generator should be straight ahead that was a really nice uh, landing animation too That's such a bullshit place to end that. Why oh, you gotta do it like that? Come on. Come on now. Oh no! Well, oh, they're broadcasting in 1080. I'm rebroadcasting in 720 so I don't have video degradation. If the giant burning 2 isn't enough of a clue, spoilers, we lose. Despite the awesomeness of the Dawnblade we just looked at, we're defeated in our backyard. Earth's last safe city is safe no more. Destiny 2 is a game that opens with loss. In one fell swoop, players will lose their powers, they'll lose their home, and maybe the saddest of all, they will lose their vaults. <laughs> just, I just need a minute for Fatebringer. Okay. And it's all taken there, yep. by Dominus Gaul. Yep, ripped the leader the vault. of the Legion who you just oh, got introduced at the end. Gaul, or Gary, as he's sometimes referred to. Gaul is here for a simple reason. He's been raised since he was just like a little turtle, just a little guy, to believe that he and the Red Legion should have been chosen to receive the Traveler's power. Gaul believes in a better class of guardian. He's here because he believes the Traveler, in choosing us, made the wrong choice. And in Destiny 2, Gaul intends to show the Traveler the error of its ways. Humanity, us, That's not a bad in the way. starting point, actually. The game opens with loss and becomes a game about recovery. Recover your powers. Become strong again. Reclaim your connection to the Traveler. And find powerful new gear, weapons, armor. Recover the vanguard. Those three characters we just saw. Zavala, Cade, and Akora. They're all dealing with this loss just like we are and in different ways. Why do Zavala, I feel like Luke Smith is about to cry thing, right now? He's having an existential crisis. He's wondering things like, without the light, are we even guardians? Although it's like, it's Zavala's voice, not mine, so it's way more awesome. It's way better. Ikor is angry. The warlocks who like value so much of their connection to the traveler and knowledge, one of those two things has been taken away. So in her rage, she's fled. We have to find her. And then Cade, sort of plucky hunter leader. Cade goes off and does the least expected thing of all. He goes off and tries to be a hero. And what happens next is pretty expected because it goes totally sideways. Let's take a closer look at the game scenario and the things you're going to chase in Destiny 2. Hey, you two. Give me a sec. Zavala's doing the hero thing in the plaza. Me? I've got a date with whoever's behind this. It'll be a short date.
Destiny 2 tells a brand new story. Did you what see that motherfucker get slammed Destiny to the ground? Their powers, their history, and home. Since Destiny 1 release, there's been no foe that they could stand before and not tip over. Whether it's Crota, Oryx, spider monsters, whatever. But in the opening of Destiny 2, players realize there is in fact a foe who has the power to not only take everything you own away, but to take your power Oh shit. I just noticed they brought the motherfucking traveler to the ground. Dominus Gaul is a Cabal warlord who has brought with him the Red Legion and has come to our system to take the traveler's powers, the light, take it for himself. Gaul's jealous. He wants to have the light. He wants to be chosen. Gaul is a different villain. He's not a psychopath who just wants to erase humanity off the face of the earth. He feels like this is something that is owed to him because of everything he's been through. He's a villain who you're like, yeah, this guy kind of has his stuff together. He's more like uh, Alan Rickman's character from Die Hard. <laughs> like, minus all the Britishness. The protector itself, the traveler, is put in a cage, and in an instant, all guardians lose their light. Unexpected and irreversible. You can no longer go back to the tower. You can no longer even walk. All you can do is stumble. Nobody expected that light could be taken away once it was given. The city has been lost and the vanguard's been cast out. And you are the hero of this story. Whether you're a titan, a warlock, or hunter, you have to go out and get your powers back and take back the city. I, I don't think that it's very, very spoiler at all. I think this is just going to be the bit of the beginning. It's a fresh start for all players. Destiny 2 has an all new cinematic campaign. There's more cinematics than we've ever had before. I think. How long before the fleet's combat ready? Have more story missions. There's quests, there's adventures, there's gonna be people talking to you. Let's bring them home, you and I. All new worlds to explore. We've got cooperative strikes for three players, new nightfall strikes, and a brand new raid. In Destiny 2, we built you all new weapons, all new armor, and a pile of brand new exotics. We also redesigned the weapon slots. They're gonna have a kinetic weapon, an energy weapon, and then a power weapon. Power weapons are things like fusion rifles and sniper rifles and grenade launchers. In that energy slot and the kinetic slot, you can have the same weapons. The new weapon plan was designed to provide players with more freedom and more choice to use the stuff that they love. Okay, so... So if I have an energy pistol and a kinetic pistol, I can use two pistols. We have the Dawn Blade. You can cast your super, you've got your sword, and you're flying over everyone, and you can just rain down fire, phoenix, projectiles that just decimate people. And then you have the Sentinel. The Sentinel is a titan, and he is able to summon a shield that he could just knock his opponents out with. We can throw his shield and just bang it off dude's heads. All right, Captain America. And then you have the Arc Strider. They summon this mystical staff and wield it like a crazy acrobat, cracking enemies in the head. It's awesome. That looks pretty fun. idea of losing your home and being cast out and the lengths that you go to to get it back it's all tied together to be something that's really meaningful the sense of starting as an underdog and climbing to a great height is really fun destiny 2 is the place where we get to reach back out to everyone who could enjoy a sweet first person shooter in a future world with giant awesome aliens to fight and gear to chase and powers to use and say come check this world out come get invested in this world yeah that was definitely the dubious volley but also like 
Also, I mean, going off of all the imagery that you've seen so far, I think it's kind of safe to assume what happened to the Traveler. Wow. All right. Are you guys ready to check these worlds out? Yeah. yeah. You're going to applause after every sentence. I'm going to be up here for a while. Uh, this is what we get to do. We get to build worlds. This is what, when we make Destiny, we get to build worlds that pull you in and you get to visit again and again. And then we get to fill those worlds with action, like what you saw in Homecoming. I have two kids, and just like you guys, they play Destiny a lot, I can tell, don't worry. Especially the guy with the Titan armor on. And my oldest plays a lot like I do. He's a solo player, he loves the campaign. He loves story missions. He patrols the wild as a lone wolf, and he loves it. I said that a few times. My youngest likes to compete. He's always in the crucible. You guys know the feeling. He's also in a clan that he raids with. So I'm not going to tell you how old he is because he's, he's already better than me. And, uh, and he reminds me about it all the time. Hey, Dad, look what I got today. Check me out. You guys know what it's like, right? And I'm like, I got to go into work the next day and deal with another child in my life, Luke Smith. And he's like, guess what I got last night? Check me out. That's my best Luke Smith impression. The point is, there's a lot to do in Destiny. And it's this variety that can appeal to all of us, right, in any type of mood that we're in. And now we've added more. Destiny 2, there's, there's more to do than any game we've ever made at Bungie. So we're going to start with what's coming back. We start with a brand new story. The Red War Campaign. It's going to send you across the solar system and back to all new places. Yeah. Yeah, he's not about to have... He's not about to have uh, fucking on orgasm journey, tears right on stage. And more cinematics than we've ever had in a Destiny game. You just saw a part of the first mission, Homecoming. And today, we're going to get the controller in your guys' hands, and you're going to get to play it for yourselves. Yeah. Strikes are back. The cooperative missions, you guys can play with your friends if you have them, or guardians you haven't met yet in matchmaking. We've got a new strike. It's called the Inverted Spire. And you guys are going to get to play that today, too. Yeah. It's, it's going to take you to one of the new worlds, Nessus, through Red Legion territory and into a Vex stronghold where you're going to fight a three-stage boss. It's pretty sweet. And then there's the Crucible. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask. PvP players, thanks. A competitive multiplayer, the place that brings you into combat with the most dreaded opponents in the world of Destiny. You guys. Like Luke said, we've made some big four changes. Four months left. To the Crucible well, Destiny June, too. July, August, yeah, yeah, four months. For, for PvP players. It's now 4v4 across all the game modes. Yeah. Okay. The new HUD has got information about your opponents, like whether they have their super ready, whether they picked up power ammo, all towards the same goal, to make it an experience that's easy to get into, but it's hard to master. Yeah. That sounds really good. I'm, I, I'm very interested in seeing how so that plays we out. Maps. We got new modes, and we believe this is the best PvP offering that Destiny has ever seen. Cool. Today we're introducing one of the brand new modes, it's called Countdown. It's the first ever attack defend mode in Destiny. Internally, we've had some pretty intense play tests. And today, well, you guys are going to get to play that too, so, yeah. So kind of like, what's that, what's that so Battlefield game? Rush? Because these are your teammates. And your opponents. That's right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> any day, any day. Of course, we have a brand new raid. Yeah. And we're going to show it to you later. The pinnacle activity, the biggest challenge a guardian can face. Anyone that's ever completed one of these knows they're mysteries for you guys to find, to solve together on your own. We're going to leave that till later day. 
And then there's another area that we've made really big improvements to, we're really excited about. Exploring the world. Yeah. Yeah, this is the part that I want to hear about. Really, really cool stuff. So because players exploring the world I have a feeling that they're going to go with that Wildlands approach where it's third person until you zoom in and then it's uh, first person. We've made being in the world so much better than just doing patrols. There's so much more to do as you explore. Now, you can launch all of the new activities in the world without going to orbit. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite place to go in Destiny. Uh, there's still patrols. Ambient encounters, materials and chests for you to find, public events that now have heroic objectives. But now, they're adventures. Treasure maps for you to follow. <laughs> Lost sectors for you to discover. Just choose a landing zone and the rest is up to you. You're gonna meet new characters in the world. They have their own story to tell. They're gonna send you on those side missions, adventures. The adventures are filled with new mechanics, new encounters. They're gonna take you to new places and each have their own rewards that's gonna make your guardian stronger. These same characters are also gonna mark your map with mysterious locations to discover. These we call lost sectors. When you descend into these dungeons, you're gonna find a cache of treasure and a boss that holds the key. Yeah. All of this is gonna be easier to find in Destiny 2 because of the new map to guide your way. You can choose to play the way that you want. You can search for lost sectors, complete adventures, rally to public events. They now show up marked on your map where and when they're gonna happen. So far, I think I'm right. These activities are the foundation of Destiny 2. And we're gonna take you to all new places to do them. Four brand new worlds. Worlds filled with mystery, adventures, and new characters to meet. But the team can show you these worlds better than I can, so let's check out the new worlds of Destiny 2. We have these incredible worlds to explore. There are all new destinations, new planets, with incredible spaces and secrets hidden. Now we have stuff tucked around every corner, under every locked door. There's something there for you to find. The map is a huge part of this new player experience for Destiny. Now you can actually go directly from one planet to another planet without going to orbit first. You can just open the director, pick your new destination, and go straight there. It's about getting you into the action faster. We want to remove as many barriers as we can between your gun and the enemy's face. Everything you're doing on every destination is about getting more powerful, and it's about getting the band back together. The vanguard have been scattered, and as a player, it's your job to go out to these mysterious destinations and gather them back together. And everywhere you go, it's about growing more powerful and learning how to go back and take back your home from the doll. first destinations that you're going to go to is the European Dead Zone. It's an incredible place. It's the largest destination we've ever built, easily, maybe by a factor of two. And we have found a refuge where we've built a camp. It's the place where humanity stops fleeing, and it's where they decide to, you know, plant a flag, start getting strong again. One of our new worlds is Titan. It's a moon of Saturn. If the light can find its way back to you, then perhaps there is hope for us all. That's where Zavala chooses to go, to heal his wounds and to recover from the assault and the defeat that he's just suffered. It's this incredible methane ocean with 40 meter high waves and there's an old human utopia there that's sinking into the ocean. These huge monolithic structures constructed by humanity at the peak of the Golden Age. 
There's literally no land mass on Titan. It looks like the ocean. Hurry, come on. I don't know how long this portal's gonna stick. Cade is on a planetoid called Nessus. It has been totally occupied by the Vex. They have transformed it almost entirely into one of their machine worlds. It has its own native vegetation, and the landscape has these incredible canyons that are actually based off of this um, word I will mispronounce called Tepui, <laughs> just like these Brazilian plateaus. And then we go to Io, which is this sort of sulfuric yellow moon of Jupiter. Io is the last place in our solar system that the Traveler touched before the collapse happened. And you can imagine that a place where the Traveler once appeared has a bunch of mythology and lore and mystery surrounding it. It's a very sacred place to guardians, and particularly warlocks, and particularly Ikora. This is where I return. It's kind of like a really big expansion. in my personal gaming history have involved other people. From bonding with my own brothers to leading my own guilds and running tournaments for the different games I've loved. You know, growing up, becoming a part of these communities for some of the first times I ever felt like what it was to belong. And I'm incredibly grateful for the friendships that have come from playing those games and the impact that they've had on me. Somebody else who's about to fucking cry yeah, on over stage. Over time, I've come to understand just why games are so important. Games are the best medium for, for bringing different people together. <laughs> you know, and now at Bungie, I'm surrounded by so many different people who have very similar stories. And it's an absolute privilege to be part of a studio who cares deeply about bringing people together and building communities in the games that we create. The last three years has been an amazing experience watching Destiny launch and seeing our communities form. You guys have worked together to solve the challenges that we've thrown at you. You've teamed up to help each other learn how to play the ins and outs of this game and you've gone above <laughs> and beyond. It's the game itself to better the lives of others. You have helped us build a world that has brought people together. And we are so proud of the amount of respect and love that has defined this community. So many lives have been changed by you, and they will continue to be changed. We know we have to continue to support this, and today, I'm happy to say that in Destiny 2, clans are coming into the game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but how? Tell me now, how they're coming in. For those of you in. who are unfamiliar with clans, they're optional teams that you can join, making it easier to play with other people. For me, playing with my clan has been core to my Destiny experience, but up until now, coordinating with my clan had to happen outside of the game. With Destiny 2, we're bringing official clan support into the game. We want it to be easier. We want it to be easier for you to manage and grow your clan. So we're adding in-game rosters. We're adding tools you need to build your fire teams and custom banners for you to help shape your shared identities. I'm going to rip that custom banner shit apart. On top of that, we're adding a reward system that is shared by every member of your clan. So whether you're the type of player who raids every week, or you only have the time to jump into a few PvP matches on the weekend, your contribution will help everyone in the clan get rewards. <laughs> Now, we realize that joining a clan is not for everyone, and that's okay. But this is why I'm super excited to say that clans are going to matter to you, even if you never join one. In Destiny, we had co-activities that were designed to inspire friendship. 
activities like the nightfall, raids, trials. Ooh, what was that word that she said? To dedicate a groups of people because we believe that challenge is what fuels the memories between you and your lifelong friends. And we didn't think that matchmaking was a great solution because of just how toxic gaming communities can get when you throw strangers temporarily into these challenging experiences. And while we think that playing with a group of people that you know and trust is the best way to experience the game, we made it inaccessible for some players to experience our in-game content. So we had an idea. We have these clans who are our best examples of communities with positive culture. That is and we a sad have emote. so many players who are looking to play challenging content in this welcoming environment. What if we put those two together? We're trying something new in Destiny 2, and we'd like to introduce you to Guided Games. Now, at a high level, Guided Games is a system where clans and solo players can meet to play challenging activities. And as a solo player, you can use Guided Games to pick a clan you want to be paired with for a session of the raid, a session of trials, or the nightfall strike. And the most important thing about this is that you get to see which clans are currently hosting, and, and you're able to read just a little bit about them so you know who they're looking for at that moment. You get to see how they present themselves, and you get a little sense of what type of players are part of that clan. And for players who are in an active clan, you know that building a full fire team of six to run the raid can still be a frustrating experience. And if you're a scheduler like me, then you're motivated to play with a consistent group of people. But you've probably had to deal with the experience of someone bailing at the last minute, and then you're scrambling to find a substitute, and you're just trying to keep the group together. With guided games, you'll be able to open up your party to new players who are looking for a group to play with you. <laughs> Through guided games, Clans are now the foundation of the community that leads every player to all the most challenging content. And while we're really happy to say that everyone's going to have a chance to experience everything that Destiny 2 has to offer, we're really more excited about who you're going to meet and how you're going to play together. We know there is a community for everyone, and we hope that in Destiny 2, we can help you find one where you belong. Destiny 2 really tries to say, you belong. You can play by yourself, and that's awesome. But playing with someone else and tackling a challenge together, that's when we believe Destiny is really at its best. We've heard loud and clear from a lot of our players over the last couple of years that they really wanted to play in-game activities like the raid, nightfall strikes that require a group, but they just couldn't get enough players online at the same time. Our big challenge is like, how do you take the ease of matchmaking, and how do you take the magic of community building and help people find the people that you will have a great time with? We're adding two new systems to Destiny 2 that are pretty critical, clans and guided games. Clans have always been a part of Destiny. It's just been a nameplate or a second friends list. But clans are finally in the Destiny 2 game. Clans in Destiny 2 are groups that you can join to play the game together. When you're looking for the clans, you kind of get to see their motto, you get to see their name, you get to see that awesome clan banner there, and you kind of get a sense of who they are before you say, you know what, yeah, I'm gonna go play with these guys. Clans are gonna have progression, rewards, and they're also going to be guides for the Guided Games experience. Guided Games is a way to allow solo players to seek out clans, to find people who are already hosting a game who are just looking for one or two more players. So imagine you had five people who wanted to play Raid, but they're missing a sixth person. Then you have a solo player who's never played Raids before, and they're like, I just want to see what this is like. We'll match a group and a solo player together. Guided games are our way of making sure everyone who loves Destiny can play every piece of content we build. Guided games doesn't require any commitment. You just have that really great experience, and then you can part ways. But our hope is, if you have a blast in that activity, maybe you'll make some friends and join the clan.
Destiny, through clans and guided games, is going to help people fill out their friends list, so they're always going to have people to play them. Kind of matchmaking. What we try to do in Destiny It's too, matchmaking is to a specific clan. Throughout the entire game. When you get to the farm, you meet this character. And I think Hawthorne, it's only with solo players. Anymore, but she went out into the wilderness and created a community of her own. So we use the storytelling. It's created so many friendships that would have never existed, all because of this game. Andiamo! We really try hard to make sure from the ground up we're building this to be an experience that you want to share with your friends. And not only your friends, but the potential friends that you could have. I've never had a game that feels like home before, but Destiny just feels like home. There are no words to explain how much I love, love this community. People have found a new place to call home and new people to call family. Destiny 2 is really ramping up everything. Oh, now world. I'm gonna cry. It really is about the breadth of experience that you can have. Whether you're in matchmade activities like PvP and strikes, or whether you've taken a step into guided games, it's a game that's best enjoyed beside other players. Did that guy in PvP have oh, no helmet that's, on? That's what the game's about. It looked like you could go helmetless in PvP. Is that a thing now? I'm gonna have to go look through that later. I don't know why I closed out of that. As you just saw, Destiny is a series that brings people together. It's allowed me to reconnect with an old friend from junior high, someone I hadn't heard from in almost 20 years. I was sitting at the Sony E3 press conference a couple years ago, and Destiny the Taken King was just revealed on stage, and my phone starts buzzing. And I look down and it's a message from this friend and he's like, dude, do you know anything about this Destiny game? And I'm like, yeah, I know a little bit about this Destiny game. And since then, we've played the game together for dozens of hours. We've introduced our families in real life and we've got the opportunity to laugh again, just like we did when we were kids playing Super Nintendo in his parents' basement. Destiny's also given me the opportunity to grow closer with my youngest brother. We talk on the phone now, almost every week. And for the first 10 minutes, instead of talking about our jobs or talking about our parents, we're talking about destiny. We're talking about our guardian's trials, where we've been in the world, the crazy loot we found, his story about how he got Gallahorn, the dudes he's been crushing in the crucible. And every week, he asks me about destiny too. And every week, I deny That throwing knife looked good. Until today. With Destiny 2's clans and guided games, we aim to bring together millions of more people just like that. To reconnect with old friends and to meet new ones that you'll never forget, that's the promise of this game. To us, Destiny is more than just a game though. It's a world where you can lose yourself for 10 minutes or for a thousand hours, where you can explore- I'm pretty sold, but I, the world I at still your own pace, or take on some of the most competitive I don't know I want to see more in video games today where you can play solo like I do most of the time or with an old friend a family member or with someone you just met this this is destiny 2 destiny is a world I want to be a part of where there are amazing activities to do every week and there's always someone to play with on behalf of Bungie and Activision, I want to take this opportunity to thank this incredible community that inspires us to work tirelessly to make this game a worthy sequel to the original. Before I pass on the baton to Eric Hirschberg at Activision, who's going to close out the show, here is the official gameplay trailer for Destiny 2. Hi, Cora. If you tell me this is a practical joke, well, it kills me to say it, but I, I would be really impressed. Impressing UK? Uh, I think, yeah, PC release. Hi, Cora. What have you got? Someone or something has sabotaged the Skyline defenses. This is a, this is a pretty hype trailer, too. I'm gonna cut the camera. Battle stations! Everyone with me, now! Take 
taken our home. And now, they threaten our very existence. But if we attack together, we can take back our home, or we die trying. Okay. Yeah, Kate is the best. Am I right? Am I right or am I right? And no one doesn't like Nathan Fillion. Don't bother. Um, uh, as I'm awesome going to call it right now. Was, I can tell you Raid in I'm the Traveler. The game a ton. It is even better than it looks. I could not be prouder or more thankful to our partners at Bungie. They had a big vision for this game to make Destiny 2 a, a sequel-worthy successor to what they started with Destiny. And they've also really listened to all of you, to our community. And I think they've made all the right moves to make Destiny 2 just awesome. So let's hear it for Luke and Steve and Emmy and Mark. <laughs> and let's also hear for the entire Bungie team that they're representing back home who are just killing themselves to make this thing awesome for you guys. Amazing work. Now, you know, long before I was a partner of Bungie's, I was a fan of Bungie's and their games, and it's just been an honor and a pleasure to call them our partners and to help them bring this vision to life. And for all of you who are here in person, in just a few minutes, you're gonna be the first people in the world to put your hands on the controllers and get your hands on Destiny 2. You are going to play uh, the first campaign mission that you saw at the beginning of the stream. You're going to get to team up with one another and experience a brand new strike. And you're going to get to battle it out in a brand new multiplayer map, playing a brand new multiplayer mode. So it's going to be a lot of awesome content. <laughs> and for those of you who are watching at home thinking, well, that sucks for me, uh, don't worry, we've got your back because uh, we are going to be hosting a beta later this summer so everyone will get a chance to get their hands on Destiny 2 before the launch. When doing all this, bringing a vision and an undertaking as ambitious and huge as Destiny 2 to life, uh, it takes more than just the great talent we have at Activision and the great talent we have at Bungie. It takes partners who also can see the vision and believe in the vision as much as we do. And we have a partner just like that in Sony. They have been by our side since really before day one. And these guys are, you know, legit. Some of the hardest core <laughs> Destiny players I know oh, let's see are it. on the team that we work with. What's Sony, Sony gonna so get? They've been hugely supportive every step of the way of Activision, of Bungie, and of the Destiny vision, uh, including uh, today, because they're providing all of the slick 4K PS4 Pros that you're gonna be playing on today. So, a heartfelt thanks to our partners at Sony for being there with us. Let's hear it for them. Now, it's no secret that Destiny has inspired millions of console gamers all over the world, but there is one community so far of gamers that have never been able to get in on the fun, and that's all you PC fans out there. Now, now as you know, we've already announced that Destiny 2 is coming to the PC, and it's going to be 
just an epic version of the game. And today, you don't have to take my word for that. You're going to get to put your hands on it and check it out for yourself and see all the love and attention that we're building into it just for PC fans. But what we haven't announced is where you're going to be able to find it. Well, let me tell you, there is a place out there where the most awesome PC games and the Coming most the passionate Steam. PC gamers anywhere in the world both live. And Destiny 2 is going to live there as well. So I want to uh, introduce a friend of mine who wanted to be here in person. He's all the way over in China today, so he's going to get in on the fun by video. But uh, he knows a thing or two about Epic PC games, and it's my friend and counterpart at Blizzard Entertainment, Mike Morheim. Thanks, Eric. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Morheim from Blizzard Entertainment, and I'm excited to be part of today's Destiny 2 celebration. You may be wondering, why is Blizzard crashing a Destiny party? Well, we're big fans of what Activision and Bungie have done with Destiny. We think it's a great game and a cool universe. And we have a soft spot for collecting lots of epic fun. Oh, that would also, be really cool. As you know firsthand, there's an awesome and passionate community around the world who loves this game. With Destiny 2 coming to PC, we thought it would be a great opportunity to bring the Destiny community and the Blizzard community together. So I'm excited to announce that Destiny 2 will be available for PC exclusively through Battle.net, Blizzard's online gaming service. Players will be able to buy and download games, explore content, and connect with each other through social features such as friends lists and cross-game chat. We're excited to partner with the talented folks at Bungie and Activision to make this happen, and we look forward to bringing Destiny JV, to the I don't know too much about Battle.net, um, so you're going to have to fill me in. With a bunch of Destiny 2 content to check out, so have fun, and we'll see you online soon. Oh, fuck that dude's face. I couldn't. So thanks. Thanks to Mike for helping us uh, make that great announcement. Uh, thanks again to our partners at Bungie for doing what they do and making an awesome game you're going to get to check out today. Uh, thanks to the entire team at Activision for doing what you do and bringing this thing to life. But most of all, we all want to thank all of you, all of you here in person and all of you watching all over the world. This game is built okay, that on makes the belief sense. that playing is always more fun when you're doing it with your friends. And in no time flat, you guys have made the Destiny community one of the most engaged, one of the most passionate, one of the most positive gaming communities maybe ever. So with that, neither we'll was home. his we'll parents see you online this summer in the beta. And for those of you here in the room, let's go play. Thank you. Is that it? That was a sort of abrupt... I guess maybe it wasn't an abrupt ending. I guess it just kind of felt that way. Oh, there we go. Holy shit. So, I know... Uh, I... Definitely not PC. Um, I know I've already ordered uh, pre-ordered the Xbox version. Um... But there's there's a chance. I'll, I'm gonna talk to. Hold on. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let me talk to Rena because I know I do want to open up the option to be able to play on PlayStation, um, especially if I'm trying to get the clan like up and running and going and everything else with clan support. I really want to look into that. So <clears throat> there's a chance I might be getting two copies. I don't know. I have to talk to Rena about it and see what she thinks. But I know I'm definitely getting it on Xbox. That's already been pre-ordered. But, yeah, holy shit. Um, initial takeaways? I feel like... Turn that down a little bit. I feel like... The, the Titans are getting Defenders... Like, Defender, Ark, and Solar are still a thing, but it's almost like they're exclusive. I don't know if we have more than one subclass. Can, can a Titan use the hammer the same way, or not the hammer, but the sword the same way that the Warlock can? Because... I, um... I, I don't, I don't know about that. Oh, shit, I guess we should... 
put something on. Maybe? Yeah. Hey, what's going on, Andreas? No, my my warlock was my warlock was and is my my one my bay or whatever. So uh, my dude right there. All right, well let me um let me go and find my cable and everything, and I'll at least put something on in the background while while I get these thoughts out of the way. I think I also need to go and switch up the game and all that on YouTube. Probably gonna go ahead. Oh, where's there? You go. Yeah, dude, I just, uh, remember reading that whenever I woke up. And I was like, well, holy shit. Where's, uh, where are you at, YouTube? There you are. Alright, you know, actually, because I want to be able to take some of this information and I want to dissect it. So I think I'm going to cut this so I can go and scrub through all the video. Um, but I will be in Discord if, uh, if you guys want to talk about this there. I'll probably join the voice chat or something there if, if it'll be easier for you guys or whatever. Uh, yeah. I want to get into looking all this shit over. So, I will see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys later. I was going to play. I'll probably come back and play in a little. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I'm going to do something. I'll be back.